First at four, the clock is ticking for nearly two dozen people who've been camped outside of the state house. The governor's office giving them until tomorrow morning to pack up and clear out. Since they were given the eviction notice yesterday, Governor McGee says that the state has re relocated at least seven people to warm shelters with beds. But what happens for those that don't leave? Our 12 News reporter Matt Paddock explains what ne what's next for those who want to stay in tents at the state house. Matt. Well, according to Governor McKee's staff, those evictions are not legally binding. But for those who refuse to leave the state house by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, they could face a criminal proceeding for trespassing. But Governor McKee making it clear he does not want to penalize those who are homeless at the moment. We're human beings out here and we're being treated like animals. On Wednesday, Governor McKee's administration letting those staying outside of the state house know they're to be gone by 9 o'clock Friday morning. Lisa Hodges is one of those people camping out, and she says she came across hard times and was never able to quite get back on her feet. Once I was loved and adored because I had a job and I was contributing to society, but now that I'm homeless, I'm hated and abhorred. Putting the blame on a lack of affordable housing, saying she's applied for over 50 different places to stay. They want you to have, you know, three times the amount of the rent. Who makes that kind of money? Seriously, who makes that kind of money? Governor McKee's office says they've offered everyone here transportation and a bed, as well as a place to store their belongings, something that some have already taken advantage of. But for others like Hodges, she believes this is just a short term solution. A lot of people are one paycheck away from being in this exact same position. Where our shelters go, there's not enough beds. For Caitlin Frermi, executive director of the Rhode Island Coalition to End Homelessness, she agrees. We have approximately 875 beds in our system, and you know, last night I had six openings. Governor McKee responding to that, saying that this issue is very serious and something he and the state are working hard on. We're working with the providers to establish 350 plus new shelter beds right now, and that's. Um, that's really strong work by those people who are doing the work. We're going to continue to expand the, the number until we have more shelter than we need so that we actually can get to the work in terms of housing. A protest fighting for those dealing with homelessness is scheduled to take place right here at the State House starting at 5 o'clock. And Matt, we know the Cranston Street Armory was supposed to open up soon as a 24 hour warming shelter for those that need it. But last we heard, no one, no vendor had applied to manage it. So how's the state handling that? Well, Governor McKee telling the media today that he still has high hopes for the Cran Cranston Street Armory. Now, again, the deadline was supposed to be today at 1 o'clock, but his staff tells me they've since extended that deadline until December 15th at 1 p.m., which means this is not a likely fix or something that we'll see done for at least a week. All right, our Matt Paddock live for us at the State House. Matt, thank you.